everyone. So my name is Sadie Loveless. I'm one of your guys' classmates, and today we're going to be talking about biosecurity and poultry. So, what do you guys think biosecurity is? Yeah. Protection from germs. Yeah. So biosecurity goes along with protection of germs, but it also goes along with protection from other parasites and also protection from pests. So the worksheet I passed out to you guys, you guys are just going to fill in the blanks as we go through the PowerPoint. So the first one is what is biosecurity? So the official definition are procedures intended to protect humans or animals against diseases or harmful biological agents. So the three types of things that we're going to be talking about today are what are different diseases in poultry, what, is, what are biosecurity measures on large farms, and what are biosecurity measures that you can do at your house. So our first topic that we're going to be talking about are what are different diseases in poultry. So there are three types of diseases that poultry can get. Each disease goes under one of these three categories. So these are parasitic diseases, metabolic and nutritional diseases, and as well as infectious diseases. Infectious diseases, parasitic diseases are infections or infestations with parasitic organisms. These can be things that are internal, so things that are on the inside of your body that you can't see with your own eyes. And also things that are external, so they'll be on the outside of your body. So one disease that birds can get are called coccidiosis. There's lice and mites, and there's also internal parasites. Both coccidiosis and internal parasites are something on the inside of your body that you can't see with your own eyes. Well, lice and mites are external parasites that you can visibly see. Now we're going to talk about metabolic and nutritional diseases. These are conditions caused by disturbance of normal metabolic functions, either through a genetic defect, lack of proper nutrition, or impaired nutrient absorption. So an easy way to identify something like this is something like dehydration or starvation. So the two types of diseases that birds can get are called fatty liver syndrome. So this is something that happens just to hens and it causes obesity in their breast meat. Their breast, in their breast area is where they have their heart and their internal organs. What the obesity does is it blocks all of those vital organs and all of those vital nerves and blood flow to be blocked, so it causes the bird to die. There's also rickets. This causes paralysis in the legs and causes the bird to be unable to walk. If your birds are unable to walk, they won't be able to eat properly and they won't be able to drink properly. And just like humans, we need food and water in order to survive, in order to live healthy. So the third type of disease are infectious diseases. These are caused by an invasion of a host by pathogens which grows and multiplies in the body. These are very contagious diseases that spread rapidly. So a very good, a very good idea of something that humans would get would be something like the flu. So the two types of diseases that are very deadly in, bir in birds and are very visible are avian influenza and fowl filaria. Both of the these diseases cause bleeding, internal bleeding and bruising underneath the skin and inside the internal organs. The last disease is called Marish disease. Just like rickets, this causes paralysis in the legs, and it causes the bird to be unable to walk. All three of these diseases will spread very rapidly throughout your whole entire flock, and it will most likely cause in your birds to die. So why is biosecurity important? Trey. So your chickens and the rest of this flock won't die? Yeah. So chickens are very fragile and susceptible to many different types of diseases. Once a disease enters your flock, it's very hard to get rid of it. So now we're going to be talking about biosecurity in large farms. So these are places like Herbrooks. So one employer requirement that is very important is no contact with other birds or swine in the last 72 hours. When it talks about different birds, these can be things like chickens and ostriches, anything that's an exotic bird, a domestic bird, or a wild bird. Anything that has feathers. The reason that talks about the lack of contact with swine or hogs or pigs is because pigs are in what is called an intermediate host. So basically what happens, say I get um, sick with the flu. My influenza can be transported to the pig and therefore once it's inside the pig can be transported to other types of animals. There are certain types of animals that are intermediate hosts and some that are not. So chickens or birds people are not intermediate hosts. If birds and people have some type of influenza, it has to go through the hog in order to be transported to the either type of species. 
Another employer requirement is work-specific clothing. So these are clothes that stay on site and are provided by the facility. Once you walk inside, you check in and you walk straight into a place called the bio room. Once you walk into the bio room, your clothes and all your work equipment will be there. The reason that you have to stay in the bio room is so everything from the outside stays out and anything from the inside will stay in. So in the bio room, you will find shoes or boots, a uniform, and protective equipment. All of the stuff that ever gets dirty, it's washed by the facility and it always stays on site and it never leaves. So another employee requirement are things called a foot bath. So what a foot bath is, it is something that's filled with a disinfectant. So these can come in three forms. They can come in a powder, a liquid, and a spray. A foot bath is required whenever an employee has to cross one. So say I'm walking down the hallway and I have to come from one room to another. In order to keep going, I have to use the foot bath that is provided. I can't keep going, I have to use it. There are also certain regulations for vehicles. When a vehicle comes on site, usually it's either going to a farm or it's coming from a farm. So there are people that are called gate guards who regulate who can and cannot enter the facility. Once your vehicle is checked in and it's allowed to come in, it has to drive through a tire bath. This is very similar to the liquid foot bath. There are two wells that are in the ground that the truck has to drive through, and it's usually filled with some type of disinfectant. New chicks. Chicks are purchased at one day of age. They come with pre-delivered paper paperwork with confirmation of no diseases and a vaccination for these four diseases. So these are avian influenza, which we talked about already, which is very deadly, Newcastle disease, which only happens in chicks, mycoplasma, and salmonella. A new bird should always be put into quarantine before introducing them to your flock. This is very important for both large farms and small farms. When you're bringing in birds on a small farm, you don't want some disease or some type of illness to come into your flock and wipe out the whole entire flock. Also, be sure to put your birds in quarantine before introducing them to your healthy flock. This way you can visually observe them with your own eyes and make sure that there's nothing wrong with them and you can monitor them yourself. So now we're gonna talk about biosecurity at your house. So do any of you guys have ducks or chickens or anything at your house that this would pertain to? Cornell, good. So did any of you guys go hunting? Any you guys go fishing? So for you guys that go hunting and fishing, this is also important to you guys too. So, like Cordell, Cordell has birds at his own house. So this is something that will pertain to him. So what you want to do is you want to keep separate footwear. Your shoes, when you're walking through pens, can become covered in manure. And when you're walking from pen to pen, manure is one of the easiest ways to spread and transmit diseases. You also want to keep separate clothes. Clothes can carry airborne diseases, which can affect not only you, but the other birds and other species that you come into contact with. <coughs> Another thing, Lysol is your friend. So how many of you guys use Lysol at your house to clean it? Yeah, a lot of you guys. So Lysol can also be very helpful when working on a farm. So what you wanna do is if you ever think you're gonna come into contact with a bird, you wanna spray the bottoms of your shoes and you wanna spray the floorboards in your vehicle. So when you're going to places like the park and the beach, we always see animals or some type of bird that's cute, maybe we'll go and we'll feed it you know, crackers or some type of bread, but usually there will be some type of feces or something on the ground that unintentionally we will step in. If you have birds at your house, those wild <coughs> birds can carry diseases that can be transported to your own home and affect your birds and yourself as well. Also, be careful about other ag classrooms. Typically in an ag class, either the students, the students usually either work on a farm or they live at a farm. You wanna be careful not to spread diseases to make sure that you keep your animals at your school safe and keep the animals in both your workplace and your home safe. Also, be careful when you're at other farms. You don't wanna spread anything from your house to theirs and vice versa. Always wash your hands. Washing your hands helps prevent the spread of germs between species and to yourself. There are millions of germs that you can come into contact with every day. So germs are something that you visibly cannot see with your own eye. They are microorganisms. So they're things that are either in the air, they can be on other objects, um, they're things that you touch and you don't even know. 
So before you guys sat down, I put a powder on your guys' paper. You guys can't see the powder with your own eyes, however, it's there. So you guys can see where the papers are lighting up and where it's glowing. Those are germs that you visually cannot see with your own eye. So you guys are carrying diseases or sorry, can I give you paper? You guys are carrying diseases or any type of germs that you are unin with you are unaware of. So you guys are now infected. One easy way to make sure that you are infected and to make sure that you're not spreading diseases not only to yourself but to other animals is to wash your hands. So there's a certain way that you are supposed to wash your hands. We all learn when we're little, like in kindergarten, how we're technically supposed to wash our hands. But how many of us actually thoroughly do it? Not very many. Usually when we go to the bathroom, we wash our hands super quick and then we keep going. But germs will always stick. So the way to properly wash your hands is to wet your hands and your arms to a little bit above your wrist. You then want to apply enough soap for a good lather. You want to cover all of your hands and all of your fingers. Scrub your hands and your arms vigorously for 10 to 15 seconds. Then get underneath your fingertips, underneath your nails, and in between your fingers. Often these are places that are covered with germs that we don't even know. Lastly, rinse your hands and arms with warm running water, and then dry your hands and arms with a paper towel or a hand dryer. 